Mike Manalo from the Nerds of Color, and I just wanted to say um, this again. This was a fantastic movie. Uh, it was very realistic, um, really touching, never cynical, um, and just very honest. And I love that about it. Um, and I wanted to ask you both, um, really, what what inspired the idea for We Broke Up? Um, how did you guys get together and start writing it, and and decide you wanted to do this? Uh, so Laura and I actually went to high school together. We used to direct each other's plays. And um, when I initially I had this image of a couple sitting in a car broken up with the words we broke up, I drew a very terrible drawing that still hangs on my office wall. And Laura was in going to be in LA um, for her first round of uh, television staffing interviews. We went out to dinner and I said to her, hey, I have this idea for a movie. Uh, would you want me to want to help me write? And she goes, yes. And I was like, I haven't told you the idea yet. And she was like, I'll do it. <laughs> so I, once I pitched her the idea and we uh, started putting it together, then I think she felt more comfortable with blindly saying yes to her childhood <laughs> friend and his crazy idea. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it turned out really well. Um, do you, I, I was asking Aya and William the same thing. Um, this is such a realistic movie. And it's kind of like, it really bucks the idea of the traditional rom-com, everything's neat and tidy at the end, everything's happily ever after, et cetera. Um, and it's because you really have these characters that feel like real world people. Um, and I think that that's something that I personally gravitate to, and I think audiences do too. Um, and given that, do you guys think that the idea of the traditional romantic comedy, um, movies like 27 Dresses or, or anything like that, no offense to them or anything like that, but do you think that those are dead today? No, um, <laughs> we both, it's, it's funny. We joke. I'm like, we're both the crier. We're both the emotional one. <laughs> and Jeff, but Laura, so, play it cool. <laughs> play it cool. I know. I be mean, cool, man. No. Um, uh, we both love romantic comedies and, and uh, I mean, I, this is obviously like a period piece, but I think I've watched Joe Wright's Pride and Prejudice, like no fewer than a hundred times. Like we love them. So I think we weren't trying to reinvent the romantic comedy so much as we really wanted to write these very grounded characters. And usually I think in a breakup movie or a romantic comedy about a breakup, somebody's the villain, somebody is the bad guy, and the other person is the one who's sort of recovering from that. And we wanted to tell this um, very even-handed story about people who uh, had come to a crossroads in their relationship and didn't love each other any less. But then what do you do when, when all of a sudden you realize, oh, oh, wow, maybe, maybe we're not on the same page here at all. So I think it was just that sense of um, wanting to tell a grounded story with very real people, um, very three-dimensional people, um, and, and sort of find the romantic comedy within that story instead of necessarily, you know, poo-pooing the idea of a rom-com. Yeah. So really oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think it sort of helped us too that we like, we didn't set out to make a romantic comedy. We set out to tell Doug and Lori's story. And I think ultimately it, 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 it is a romantic comedy, of course, but we really think at its core, it's a relationship movie and it's about the two of them. I, I got that sense from the film as well. Um, and I thought you did a really good job nailing that. Um, I, I wanted to ask, Aya and William, they're so good in this. Um, I, I wanted to ask how you got involved with them and were they your first choices for, for Lori and Doug? I know with William, he, he worked on The Good Place with you, Jeff. Um, yeah. Uh, it, you know, I guess Aya as well. I'm not entirely sure if you guys had worked with her in the past and how you thought of her. How did, how did all that start? So um, my, uh, one of my, another person who I've known since I was a teenager, our casting director, Amanda Linker Doyle, and her partner Chrissy, who's known Aya forever, when I first when we first sent the script to them, they immediately were like, "Oh, you Aya Cash is perfect for Lori." And at that point, I I don't know how many minutes I was into watching You're the Worst, which I've now watched multiple times. I was just like, "Yes, a million percent, Aya is amazing," and have now seen everything she's done, literally, I think. Um, and Laura has history with Aya that she can talk of back at um, with theater, and then Will. Will had been recommended to me for a different project because he did theater in New York with all of my friends from college. So when Will was cast on The Good Place, I get the deal memo and I'm looking, I'm like, I know this guy. I was like, why do I know him? 
And then I went on Facebook and we had like 40 mutual friends. I realized he was the guy who used to do theater with my friend, uh, Kui Gwen. And so I like, realized, I was like, oh, this is, this is the Will that's friends with Kui. And it was again, multi we're on the Good Place set and I'm watching Will work and I'm like, oh, he needs to play Duck. And so because Will and I worked together on Good Place, I didn't want to bug him until I knew the movie was happening. But between season three and season, but between season three and season four, the good place it became clear the movie was going to shoot after season four. So that's when I walked up to Will in base camp and I said, "I'm having I'm having a movie made. Please read it. I want you to play one of the two leads." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Okay, cool. Like we're friends, but I assume people say that to him a lot. Like, oh, I got I'm making a movie." And then I think when he read it the next weekend, he texted me. He was like with some swear words involved, but basically, holy blank, this is fantastic, I'm in. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. So uh, that was sort of how that came together. And I, uh, you know, I, I, back in my playwright days, I developed a script with Sundance Theater Lab, and I was right down the hall in a different rehearsal room working on my friend Jason Groat's play. And she had been this towering figure of the off-Broadway New York scene for a long time. And she had this reputation of being able to play incredibly vulnerable characters in also extremely weird plays. And, and I think that tonal contrast, right, from You're the Worst, I, I just don't think there's anybody better working out there alive. Um, she's just so stunning as a performer. And putting them together, right, you never know, right, because we're not doing chemistry reads. We just had a feeling. And from day one on set, we were like, oh, my God, they're just spectacular together. They, they really did um, work really well together, especially those cabin scenes. Those were among my favorite in the movie where I don't, obviously I don't want to spoil anything that's being recorded for an interview, but they have some real conversations in those scenes and I love them um, completely. Um, I, I, if, if I can ask one last question, um, the, the Instagram stories that we see throughout the movie, uh, such a brilliant, such a funny idea. Where did those come from? That... I mean, they, the first one was initially always in the script, but I wasn't necessarily sure how it was going to come to be until Tony Cavallero entered my life in such a beautiful, glorious way as he does. Um, he, he has, a, I mean, he posts a lot of Instagram stories. He's prolific on that platform. He just has these videos of him dancing <laughs> that were, I, again, when Amanda and Chrissy brought up Tony, who I absolutely love from Righteous Gemstones, um, when they brought him up, because we were really looking for someone who was kind of born on the wrong planet to play Jason was what I was looking for. And when I met with Tony, I, he was just this ball of positive energy. He's the most positive person I've ever met. And he also was just like, so, you know, I would imagine you want to hear me do the monologue, right? I would want me to do it. Do you want me to do it? I was like, yeah, of course. And he just stands up and was off book and like delivers like the speech from the third act of the movie. And I was just like, this guy is fantastic and amazing and just at so it be, evolved to the point that you know the instagram stories and stuff was really i feel like it's important once you movies evolve and projects evolve as you just add you know it's like a good stew i bet laura likes stew, it's like I a good stew. stew. exactly where you like add ingredients and as you add more ingredients you're constantly adjusting and you're constantly figuring out ways to improve it and make it better and so with each cast member, as people become involved, you know, you pivot a little bit and you might adjust off what your initial plan was. And so those specifically was a full welcome to our world, you beautiful tornado, Tony Cavallero. Let's see what happens. Yep. It worked out brilliantly. Um, I want to say thank you both uh, for your time. This was amazing. And, and the movie's fantastic too. Um, thank really you. wishes and, and hope you guys, um, you know, I, I think I hope, everyone gets a chance to see this because it really is honest and it really is true. And it, it made me feel like these were real people that I could sympathize and love. So fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. With a different perspective, watch it on your screen, hit play, so check this.